And criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Philip Holloway is here and joins us. Good afternoon, Phil. Hey, Joey. So I have to ask you, you've been watching it from the outset. What do you make of the field trip? Who do you think it benefits and why? They saw the cell towers, Phil. They went to see his home. They went to where Odin Lloyd actually lived to see the street. Uh, and of course, the crime scene. What say you? Well, Joey, the field trip, I think, is to put the whole thing in context and give the jury a, a, a way to sort of get it, their head wrapped around uh, the visuals involved here. You know, they're traveling under this theory of joint venture liability. Basically, they're saying that he's an accessory. Uh, they don't have the murder weapon. Uh, they can't say with 100% certainty that he, he actually pulled the trigger. Uh, now, there's the video, of course, that showed him with something that appeared to be a handgun in it, and I think that may be a large part of why they're doing this field trip. But they're, they're painting him as the mastermind, not so much as the trigger man, due to his notoriety, because there's really a, a lack of cold, hard evidence, if you will, uh, and there's also a lack of motive. So they're doing this to try to put it all into perspective and to wrap it up nice and neat in a case of circumstantial evidence for this jury. We'll Phil, see if they can do it, Phil. Phil, do you, do you think that um, the fact that they don't have the murder weapon is really the key here for the defense? And, and on the back side of that, or on the other edge of that, what do you think the prosecution have that is going to be the hardest thing for the defense to try to you know, thwart? The prosecution has 45 caliber shells that were recovered during a search warrant. They've got this video showing what appears to be, to me at least, clearly a handgun in his possession. Yeah. They have the crime scene a mere three minutes away from his home. They've got him arranging this meeting with Odin Lloyd. They've got him driving the car to and from the scene of the crime. They've clearly got him present at the scene of the crime. Those are the things that are going to really start to pile up, regardless of whether or not the police may have been sloppy in processing this crime scene. But all of these circumstances put together will paint the overall picture of guilt. At least that's what the prosecution is trying to do. Okay. Now, now Phil, it appears to me, just based on your analysis there, that you think the prosecution has an edge. Or do you think that the defense is doing a good job rebutting that? They have all the items you mentioned, but at the same time, what about the messy crime scene? They didn't measure anything. They simply eyeballed things. There were people trampling all over. Uh, is the prosecution at the edge at this point, or do you think the defense uh, is ahead? Well, certainly, Joey, they're going to make as much hay out of the sloppiness, if you will, of the processing of the crime scene, and that can amount to reasonable doubt. But as the judge has indicated in a pretrial ruling, the evidence in this case is, in, in the judge's words, strong uh, on all fronts. And again, they don't have to prove that he pulled the trigger. All they have to do, Joey, is prove under Massachusetts law that he participated in a meaningful way and that he knew ahead of time that either himself or either of the other two individuals knew that they were planning to shoot Odin Lloyd. So a quick, two quick points, Phil, and that's this. Okay, that he's the mastermind under this joint venture liability. But hey, the defense says my client was there, but he was merely present. Presence alone, certainly, Phil, is not uh, indicative of any type of guilt or culpability at all. That's number one. And then address number two, the issue of a lack of a motive. You're absolutely correct. Mere presence at the scene of the crime in and of itself is insufficient to convict. And of course, one can think of any number of things that could have led to this shooting. Uh, they could have just been out there smoking marijuana and then a fight broke out for whatever reason and just in a flash, somebody other than uh, Mr. Hernandez pulled out the gun and, and, and pulled the trigger. That, of course, is not beyond the realm of possibility, and that's something that I'm sure the jury will argue, excuse me, the defense will argue to the jury. The lack of motive is another thing that weighs heavily on the issue of is going to want to know why this happened, and if the prosecution can't give them some reasonable explanation as to why it would have happened, a lot of times that does equal reasonable doubt, and it is something that I guarantee you will be argued very strongly by the defense as this case goes to the jury. Mm, all right, you better believe it, Phil. Yeah, yeah Joey, <laughs> Philip, thank you so much. Coming up.